What's going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another Bring the Juice podcast live stream. Guys, welcome to just talking about training camp. We have our guys on, Matt and Adam. Uh, Adam, your first time on the stream, I know. Um, Adam's a good friend. We've connected with the other podcasts that we we do together, uh, Factually Football with our friend Andrew Thomason. So we're just starting up that channel. So if you guys could go check that out, we'd appreciate that. Um, but fellas, how you doing? Doing good. You know, just uh, got off the stream with uh, the guys that uh, no horsing around. And you know, now I'm here. Perfect. It's a Sunday stream day, right, Matt? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize that you, you just got off the stream with them. That's funny. Yeah, we streamed, I think, at 630 for like 30 minutes and then okay. ate some food. And now here I am. You're a popular man. Yeah, you're a popular man, Matt. So uh, that's a rarity these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I mean, I don't, I don't blame everybody for for wanting to have people on and going on stuff because guys, there's actually football coming on yeah. right now, which right. is crazy. Can you believe it? Um, we are officially eight days into training camp, seven days into practice. So there's been a lot of takeaways so far. I just kind of wanted to talk about, you know, some of the takeaways that we had from today's practice. Now, Derek was down there today. He's not joining the, the stream tonight because he's dead tired for obvious reasons. But I thought that we could just kind of talk about, you know, okay, here, here are some things, some players that did stand out. Um, I wanted to kind of open the floor to you guys. What are some things that you guys heard from today's practice that you guys want to talk about? Um, I think for me, it's just – seeing uh Stefan Gilmore just dominating every mm -hmm. single practice you know it's nice to see that he's you know actually living up to what I think we were all hoping he would um <laughs> seems like he's 100% healthy which to me that's uh really scary for other teams so that stuck out to me and then some of the young guys that we have on the roster right now making plays yeah yeah i the biggest takeaway that i'm and and Forgive me, I was not one of the lucky ones to get tickets today to head out there because it got sold out for, I think, the second time, actually, since camp started. So that's pretty cool for <laughs> the guys. But um, it, it sounded like they came out a little flat today, which mm -hmm. is kind of an intriguing take. Um, we obviously know that Matt Ryan's been running running the offense like a champ. Um, I think Reich or, or maybe even Ballard or both of them have really commented on the, the speed at which he brings – to the team this year, which I'm personally excited about as a, as a coach, I coach at Traders Point over here, uh, up in the, up in the Indianapolis area, but, um, you know, as well as just a flat out Colts lover. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's funny. We were talking about this a little bit off stream, Adam, before Ryan even hopped in there, uh, going to the Colts chiefs game. I know you're, you know, going to be going to that game, getting really good tickets down there right near the visitor's <laughs> bench. So that's super exciting, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, appreciate appreciate this. Michigan Wolverines really appreciate it um, as well. Juiced up as well. How's it going? <laughs> Said be popular. Just don't talk OBJ. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> yes. Yes. Where's, oh, where's Shad McGinnis to come on when you need him, huh? <laughs> I, know, right? <laughs> I may have a video recorded, like, just in case he signed, because I thought it was going to happen recently. Yeah, uh, but it, it didn't happen. Now I work third shift, so it's like okay, I'll just record it again if it happens. <laughs> the life of a content creator. You're like, I got these potential scenarios all mapped out here. That's what I was doing when the, all the quarterback stuff was going around. Yeah. I was like telling our guy Alex, who who does helps with a lot of like the visual stuff. I'm like, all right, create a thumbnail for Baker, create a thumbnail for Matt Ryan, yeah. create a thumbnail for like a couple different other guys, and uh, finally we got we finally got the answer. That was awful, guys. That was terrible trying to figure out and decode and get all these people yeah. with sources. And it was just, I'm glad it's over. I'll just say that. But right. um, Michigan Wolverines asked this question. Also, he says uh, two questions. I'll say Isaiah Rogers looked in training camp and impressions of the rookie Nick Cross. Thank you. All right. What are your thoughts on, on these two players guys from what you've heard? Say so everything I've seen, Nick Cross, he's looking really good, especially for a rookie. Um, looks like he might win that starting role, which is, you know, kind of surprising to me because I thought Rodney McLeod would start off as a starter and eventually you would see Nick Cross take over. But, you know, Nick Cross already getting hang of things and looking really good. That's always uh, something that makes me happy. And then with Isaiah Rogers, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a couple plays where, you know, he got beat, but he's been making plays in training camp too. He's been picking off quarterbacks. 
So it's nice to see that he's still looking the same that he has last season because he looked like he was getting ready to become that starting caliber type of corner. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it, everything I'm reading is Cross is getting the, the nod ahead of McLeod even when McLeod's in there, right? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so I think that that we're probably going to see him get that starting role, which if you talk about athleticism and hit stick, you know, you got – you got the uh, Blackman Blackman Cross combo back there, and then I'm kind of the same way with Rogers. I've been out to camp a couple times. Um, I think he's be he's playing consistent, um, nothing crazy flashy. I think we've seen so many flashy plays, but in fairness, I think a lot of those have been almost more more offense. And I, I think that's probably just because let's be honest here, offense sells, right? Yeah. And that's the way the NFL's going. So I think that that's why we get so much of that, so much of that pub. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. This is off topic here, but this one's for Matt specifically. Yeah. Matt, rate the rate um, the prey movie. Have you seen it, Adam? Yet? No. You I seen it? I would go probably seven and a half out of ten. Um, okay. I I liked it quite a bit. I like that. Uh, it's a simple movie. They're not trying to do too much with it. They're going back to basics. I think that's what I appreciated and. Uh, yeah, if you if you want violence with the predator, you want that gory stuff, you're gonna get it. You're gonna get plenty of it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Are you uh Adam, are you a, a predator fan at all? Did you watch that as much? I'm I'm not, man. I, okay. you know, I don't get a lot of time. I've got a four year old, so there there's uh, not a whole lot of movie time in my house, but fair. uh well, that's but totally fair. It's, yeah, you know, and I don't think we want to talk about PJ Masks or Paw Patrol, so we'll stay <laughs> right, away right. from that. <laughs> hey, the Paw Patrol movie came out. Yeah, I tell you what, Matt, how do you know that? That's my question. That's crazy. I, look, I watch trailers. I see a lot of things <laughs> pop up. I heard it's actually a good movie. A lot oh. of people liked it. Hmm. You know, so I, I haven't seen it yet. Okay, but I will right. watch it one day. You will watch it one day, guys. Yeah. I gotta say, that's like when my dog was like young, like a puppy. They would put him in like a like a cage, and they would just turn on Paw Patrol for hours, and he would just be like <laughs> entranced by Paw Patrol. And so it's like my dog's favorite show. So yeah, I mean, that's put hilarious. some respect on Paw Patrol for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a, we got a guy in here from Ooh. Panama City, Panama. Wow, appreciate that. Appreciate the support and the nice Thanks. words there. Uh, I wonder what time it is in Panama City right now. That's that's crazy. Same time. Is it really? I think. Wow. They're, okay. they're central. Okay. I think, or it's they're eastern, Patrol, I believe. There's some eastern. Paw Patrol love. You gotta love that. Yeah, there's some <laughs> Paw Patrol love going on in the comments. Juice. Oh, up. good, good. That's what 10. we all came here for. Um, <laughs> Lawrence Bones is out there today as a part of the media. He's super burned. Uh, I feel that now. When I was out there the one day, and especially today, I mean, heck, it was insane out today in terms of just heat. Uh, I was burned a little bit from even the one day of training camp, so I can't even imagine uh, how burned I would have gotten today. So hopefully you uh, can recover from that, Lawrence, because sunburns, no joke, man, no fun at all. I didn't right. know if he was sunburned or if he was talking he was burned from the OBJ conversation. I oh. thought it came up about the same time. So <laughs> Yeah, 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 I feel that. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Talking about John brings up a good point. So Matt Ryan today, 11 of 18 with four drops. So technically 15 of 18, if you count, you know, if they would have caught those, you know. And so Matt Ryan still had a pretty solid day, all things considered. It just seemed like there was a case of the drops today. You know, the Colts put the ball on the ground a lot today, um, a lot more than usual. I think Frank Reich said they probably uh, dropped more balls and fumbled the ball more today than they'd done all the other seven days of camp so far. So. <laughs> I mean, if that tells you how sloppy it was for the offense today. Um, but I think, you know, it's good because sometimes you guys, you're going to have that, right? You're going to have, you know, some off days. The Colts were off two days, right? So, yeah, I mean, sometimes you're, you're just going to have to have those days where, honestly, you kind of play like crap in some ways. And, you know, the best – and, Adam, I'm sure you can tell – you can say this as a coach, like the best teacher is failure, right? And, you know, whenever you're failing and you have a bad day, you know, it only should inspire you more. Uh, to come back the next day and, and correct those mistakes. So I what are your thoughts boys, on fail the, fast. The that's my that's my go to, right? Fail fast. Yeah. Just do it quickly mm-hmm. and then turn around. I think tomorrow is going to be super interesting, by the way, right? When you have a bad practice. And again, mm-hmm. more speaking from a coach side than a than a Colts fan side. But for me, I'm looking for how does my team respond? Because you've got a 17 game season, right? Mm-hmm. How are you going to respond in this season? 
I, we'd all love in our homerism for the Colts to go to 17 and 0, but let's, let's be real honest. How are you going to rebound from a loss or a bad game? And that's yeah. what will be huge for me to hear about tomorrow from yeah. camp. Yeah. And it, and it seems like Matt Ryan's embracing that. He's embracing yeah. the bad days. He's embracing those and saying, hey, guys, like, you know what? That stuff happens. And, you know, like you said, Adam, like, how are you going to, like, come back from that? You know, mm-hmm. that was kind of the same thing that I actually, Derek and I had been talking about when it came to Isaiah Rogers, because, you know, there's feels like when there's been a highlight play for wide receivers, Isaiah Rogers has typically been the one guarding them. And so you're like, OK, you're like, you know, does that get to him at all? You know, like right. when. It's like, okay, he may have the rest of the rest of practice. He might have excellent coverage the whole time, but there's that one highlight play, you know, and everybody's mm-hmm. like, oh, what's wrong with Isaiah Rogers? But it's how you come back from it. You know, how do you come back from a play that, you know, you got beat on? And, and, and I, it seems like at least today, Isaiah Rogers came back strong and he played really well for this DB room. So, yeah, I think the same is true for anybody on this team. If you have a bad day, you know, a lot of a lot of players dropped it, you know. Um, so how do you respond? How do you come back from it? And right. and fortunately, guys, it's still training camp, so these things mm-hmm. can be and will be cleaned up, hopefully. Um, yeah. you know, Colts haven't even played the first preseason game yet. So they're still they're still figuring each other out as well. Um, is it any concern to you guys though that the wide receivers kind of had a little bit of a rougher day today? Like in, in terms of, you know, don't want to bring up the OBJ OBJ conversation, right. but you know, like is it concerning at all? I'm, I'm not concerned yet. You know, I mean, they're young. There's going to be days where they make mistakes. You know, I, I want to see what they look like, you know, the next few practices, the next few camps. And if there continues to be problems, maybe you start reaching out to other receivers that are still available, like TY or OBJ or, you know, really about anybody that you think can come in and, you know, be productive for you. But at, at this moment, I'm not too worried yet. I just I want to see how they rebound and just how they look over the next few days before I start getting a little concerned. Yeah, I would say I came in with tempered expectations, right? I love the mm-hmm. Alec Pierce pick. I love the fact that Gilmore's going up against him. I think that's a a brilliant move, right, by Reggie and Frank and, and the offensive yeah. team. I'm a huge fan of that. Um, so I love that, but – but in fairness, I mean, if I looked at this team or this group, I kind of grouped them together with the tight ends. And if you look at that, I, I think we're going to be we're going to be competitive. I think it's going to be different style. I don't think you're going to get a lot of Paris Campbell, Ashton Doolin type stuff over the top. I think you're looking for a better route runner, and I think that those are pieces that Matt Ryan's just going to have to learn and gel with, right? I, I think right. you're going to see some more outs. You're going to see some those Michael Pittman drags, things like that. I, I don't think you're going to see, for lack of a better term, the old school Randy Moss, Tom Brady, throw it up, go get it type of offense, especially with JT in the backfield and, and some of his personal goals this year. So Yeah, man. yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking, Matt, of no horsing around, they're in here. They say, what's up? Uh, appreciate you for being in here. Uh, guys, go subscribe to their channel as well. They, they crank yes. out quality qu- quality content. Sorry, tongue twister there um, <laughs> as well. So be sure to check them out. Um, okay, Michigan Wolverines thinks it's the, uh, the one of the better Predator movies since the original. Do you agree with that, Matt? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I wasn't a fan of like the second Predator movie. I thought it was all right. Um, but I think it's the second best one. The one that came out in 08 with... Uh, you know, Topher Grace was in it and Adrian Brody. That one I actually liked quite a bit. But, hmm. yeah, I, I think it's the best since the original. I mean, you're not going to top the original. You know, it, it's just a classic for a reason. But, sure. yeah, I, I really liked it. Sure. Uh, Lawrence says Cross has issues covering Woods, though. I think about everybody has issues covering Woods with how big he yeah. is. <laughs> it's like oh, you yeah. throw your hands up at some point and you're like, what am I supposed to do, man? Um, yeah. Four, six, six, seven, two, sixty. I mean, <laughs> well, yeah. How many other numbers you need in there? Uh, I agree, Lawrence. I'm yeah. sure he does have. He probably also has nightmares about it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I, I guarantee well, you after, yeah. you know, Jelani Woods does his thing, a lot of teams are going to send their corners to like Circus Soleil and have them learn how to like <laughs> bounce on top of each other so they can guard. <laughs> oh, no doubt. No doubt. But, you know, it seems like Jelani's been pretty quiet from everything we've heard. Like we've heard all about right. Andrew Ogletree, you know, especially. We've heard Kylan Granson's had some nice days. Because we haven't really heard much about Jelani Woods. And I heard he had a couple drops today. So I, I guess, like, what are your thoughts on Woods' kind of, you know, he hasn't, I don't know the word, to, you know, really, but, like, he really has not been mentioned much this, this you know, 
uh, training camp and stuff. Like, what are right. your thoughts on that? Are you concerned about that at all? Or do you think it's just kind of part of the process for him? I think it's part of the process. I think he's somebody that it's going to take a little bit before he reaches his potential or at least gets in that area. I mean, he, he hasn't played tight end his entire career. He's been tight end for what a season or two. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, there's going to be some things we'll need to adjust. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm sure going from college to NFL with only a year or two of tight end experience is pretty difficult. So, you know, I'm not worried yet. You know, it's, it's going to take some time to have him develop into what I think we want him to be. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, one of the best things that can happen to him is the fact that he came to the Colts. I mean, don't forget Mo Ali Cox was a stud at VCU on the basketball team. Right. Yeah. And so I think you're going to get some of that. I'm also curious if the Colts are positioning themselves to keep the two young guys in Ogletree and Woods as well as Mo and maybe Kylan's on the outside looking in. And so Mm -hmm. they're looking at Jelani right now as that kind of run blocker and maybe sneaking him out less because that supposedly is one of his calling cards, right? So yeah, it's yeah. It, that's that's my opinion as to why, you know, you see him running the routes, you see him in practice, you see him on the field. And obviously the guy's in a positive way, a freak. Um, yeah. But I, I just don't see him running a lot of routes. My guess is that's what they're working on him more, which is, if you remember, what kind of happened with Mo, why Jack Doyle was here, right? They had Jack going out on a lot of pass routes. So I could see a little <laughs> bit more of that kind of role this year for him. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Can't go wrong with that frame. I mean, he definitely has an advantage on most guys. So, you know, the Colts have a lot to work with here with Jelani Woods. We'll see what his role def- definitely looks like this year and kind of how he's utilized. But a uh, um, question here about Paris Campbell. Guys, we heard about Paris Campbell a ton in the first, like, week. We really haven't heard a ton about Paris Campbell since then. Have you guys heard anything about how Paris Campbell's coming along? I mean, I haven't heard anything recently. I have seen, like – highlights and just you know videos people took you know in recent you know days of him i mean he he looks good i mean he looks like he's probably going to be our number two receiver at least at the start of the season we'll see how alec pierce develops throughout the season but i mean he's looking i think as good as you want him to look especially coming off of all the injuries he's dealing with or dealt with i should say Mm -hmm. you think he's going to take over the two role from pierce huh See, I, I think they're going to slot so. him just because of that speed and, and kind of the footwork, right? If he stays yeah. healthy. I right. mean, Pierce, I think, is going to eventually be the number two guy. But, I mean, just with Paris Campbell, just his explosiveness, um, you know, he's also pretty athletic, too. He's got good size. He catches pretty much everything that's thrown to him. I, I, as long as he stays healthy, I think he is a good number two receiver in the league. It's just I think with Alec Pierce, it might take him a few weeks to get used to the game, get used to the speed, and then maybe towards the end of the year he can take over that number two spot. But I wouldn't be surprised if Paris Campbell's still the number two guy. And hmm. honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he has more receiving yards than Michael Pittman. Whoa, that's a bold prediction. Well, and, and I, I say that because Michael yeah, preseason Pittman preseason before be he gets injured? Sorry, Paris, <laughs> I love you, but man. No, but assuming he stays healthy. Um, the reason why I say that is because I think Michael Pittman's going to get covered more, and I think there's going to be more opportunities for Paris Campbell to get open. And like I said, just with how fast and explosive he is, um, and it looks like he can get, you know, create separation a little easier than some of the other guys. That's why I think he could get more yards than any of the other guys. It, but it's always weird because it's like guys you don't expect to be leading the team in yards. They end up leading. Like Naheem Hines mm-hmm. two years ago led the team in receiving yards. So. You know, that that's why I think Paris Campbell could, but he's got to stay healthy. That That's the thing. Yeah, sure. Sure. Well, thank you to everybody who's in here. Nearly 130 people in here. Appreciate everybody who's checking us out. Uh, maybe they're checking us out for the first time. So really appreciate that. If you guys could do us a favor, hit that like button. Also subscribe as well. You can push it out to more Colts fans and non Colts fans as we can talk about more about this team. Um, another question here, I guess more of a statement here from James. We All I know is better win the AFC South this year. And I wholeheartedly agree with that because guys, it has been too long. And it's been too long for the Colts for three things. First off, winning week one. <laughs> Second off, winning in Jacksonville. And third off, winning the AFC South. It has been absolutely 
atrocious. Literally, it feels like for almost a decade now where it's just like every year the Colts somehow struggle with these three things. And the Colts have a real chance, guys, to not just, you know, get one monkey off their back, but potentially three monkeys off their back this year. Uh, what are your thoughts on kind of the Colts' chances, you know, with these three things? Um, I mean, I think their chances are really good. Um, like I, I talked about it with Zach on uh, No Horsing Around. Um, I think Tennessee got worse this year. I think the Colts got better. Houston is Houston. And then Jacksonville, they got better, but I, I just don't think Jacksonville is ready to take that step and be, you know, a contender in the AFC South. I just think with the addition of Matt Ryan, with the addition of Yannick and with Stefan Gilmore and just adding to the receiving group. And it looks like a lot of the guys they picked up in the off season or, and um, after the draft, the undrafted guys they got, looks like there's a few guys that are standing out and playing pretty well. So, hmm. I mean, they, they should win the South like, and they should win by a few games. Yeah. What are you yeah. About? Yeah. I mean, we kind of talked about this last week, Cody, on the on the podcast, right? We've, we've been yeah. breaking down the AFC South a little bit, some position battles. And it, I'll fire the shot here, too, because I think you and Andrew are, are both feeling like I'm crazy a little bit. But honestly, I think the Colts do win. But I think Jacksonville is the second team in the division. I mean, I think Houston's that bad. I, I think. Tennessee, quite honestly, I mean, I saw somebody talk about, uh, I'm going to butcher his name, but we'll just call him Chig over at Tennessee, yeah. the Maryland kid, right? Um, oh, yeah. Yep. But, and he's, he's playing great, as you would expect an athlete like that to play. But, I mean, honestly, I, I think Tennessee takes a huge drop. I agree. That they better win the South. And then secondarily, <laughs> completely off topic, James, tell me you watched the fights last night. There were 10, 10 fights finished inside of uh, – Inside of the distance, there. I see your UFC belt. So <laughs> nice. tell me you watched those last night. <laughs> uh, John asked the question: Do you do you agree this could possibly be a top three defense? If so, uh, could we we could expect that from our offense? Right. That's a that's a bold bold statement to have top top three both offense and defense. Where do you guys think you know this offense? If you're going you know at their peak, if everybody's healthy, everybody's playing to their potential, where do you think this defense could be? Defense, I think, can be a top five defense. I think the missing piece to the defense be, you know, becoming a top five defense over the last couple of years was that pass rush. That was something we needed to address really bad. And I feel like we definitely addressed it. Um, so I think we can. I think our secondary is better this year. I think, obviously, our linebackers are going to be better because you got Okereke. He's going to obviously improve each and every single season. And then with uh, Leonard, I mean, he played injured pretty much all of last season. Now he should be 100% healthy or close to it. He's going to be better this year. And then the defensive line, I think, is going to be better because you have Yannick in there, and then Quiddy is going to be in year two. And Dio, it finally has like a full off season to get ready for the season. I think he's somebody that not a lot of people are expecting to do a whole lot just because, you know, we keep talking about Yannick and we keep talking about Quiddy and DeForest Buckner. I think Dio is going to make some noise. I don't think he's going to be like a double digit sack guy or anything like that, but I think he's going to be a really good, consistent type of player that we can plug in on certain situations and he's going to deliver for us. Offense, I don't think is going to be top three. I, I just don't see it unless like all the receivers take a giant step forward and Matt Ryan has like 4,500, 5,000 yards passing. Like, I, I just don't see it happening. I think top 10, though. I think they can be top 10 for sure. I'm, I'm thinking top, let's say, I'm thinking 8 to 16, somewhere in there is where I think the offense can land. Okay. What are your thoughts, yeah, Adam? and I think it's I think it's always a question of of how you look at, look at that, right? Top three defense and what? Takeaways, forced fumbles, picks. Like, how do you rate overall? Are we looking at yardage? Are we? So, so I think that um, there are some things – that we need to curb our enthusiasm a little bit for on the defense. One is historically uh, Gus Bradley defense. They don't really bring blitzes, right? Um, so the sacks traditionally are going to be a little bit down, which I don't necessarily see as a problem. I mean, I, we did a, Andrew and I did a podcast end of last year um, talking about the old D line coach and just kind of how the Colts had fluctuated. I mean, they've never really been high in the sack totals 
I think if you're looking for the sacks, you may be let down a little bit. I do love Yannick. I do love Dio. Um, I love Buck. Um, and I really think Curtis Brooks is a guy coming from Cincinnati that's really going to blow some things up that people maybe aren't really paying attention to. Um, points allowed, John. All right, I see it down there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of factors that go into that, but I, I think you could see him be at least top five in points allowed. Uh, if they've got a rough division, right? AFC South isn't exactly a score happy division. Um, obviously, they play Kansas City and Buffalo and some teams like that, which could skew that a little bit. But I, I think he could be top five in, in points allowed this year. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see, guys. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see what this offense can do with Matt Ryan because, I mean, they were still a really, really good offense, even with Carson Wentz. <laughs> Heck, we even talked about it on the podcast, Adam. Like, you know, I think it was like seven or eight games where Carson Wentz threw for under 200 yards, which is just completely right. bizarre to me. Um, but the Colts were, you know, still in playoff contention. Honestly, it was crazy how they were literally just running the football um, and throwing it when they needed to, uh, or not even when they needed to. And they were still almost there and so yeah i think like you talked about like with the improvements at pass rush you know some second year guys coming into their own bringing back taekwon lewis on that defensive line so your line's a little bit more you know experienced and it has a little bit more depth than maybe it has in the past and it has a little bit more proven talent on that defensive line uh talk about you know stefan gilmore if he can stay healthy um, and then you throw in the addition of, you know, the wild card and Nick Cross as well, who you never know with him. You know, I think his ceiling obviously is a lot higher than if Kari Willis was going to start, you know, for you before you retired. But also the ceiling could be a little bit lower because he is a rookie and he's still figuring things out. And by the way, I feel like we never talk about Julian Blackman, but guys, he was for a while there. You know, I think his rookie season, if Chase Young didn't go do what he did, I really think Julian Blackman could have gotten that could have gotten yeah. defensive rookie of the year. Like mm -hmm. he was that impactful for this Colts defense. And so I'm really excited to see just how this defense starts to gel together. But again, there are some new pieces. So how do they gel together? You know, are they going to have mm -hmm. some lumps early on? And the same with the offense as well, you know, because it's a completely different quarterback, some new wide receivers, some new tight ends, you know, new left tackle, new right guard. Like there are some things that I think are just going to take some time. Um, and we saw that even today, you know, like, you know, I think these guys will – ultimately the offense will be pretty good, but it might take a little bit longer than maybe some people are anticipating. I think we'll be rangy on the back end, right? I think Blackman and Cross, what you're going to see is you're going to see some overall athleticism that we haven't seen at the safety position for two guys. I mean, since like Bob Sanders' day, but in fairness, that was really more Bob than anybody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we've got two guys that can range back there. I think we got two guys that can hit. Um, the, the word is Nick Cross just loves to light people up. And we know Julian Blackman loves to, you know, there was that great hit he made on Naheem Hines uh, pass play. I think it was a corner route. Um, and he went up and, and hit Hines, jarred the ball loose. But I think we're going to see that. I think the, we'll call it the downside. Again, I'm trying to play both sides here, conversationally at least. But the downside is when you have that much athleticism, that much range, if a mistake is made, you, you, you kind of get fried. So I think this Kansas City game come game three of the regular season is going to tell us a little something. I understand Tyreek Hill's not there, but, you know, Travis Kelsey gives us some problems and and don't sleep on Sky Moore. Sky Moore is a great route runner there and can mm -hmm. really, I'm not, he's definitely not Tyreek Hill. So please, if you're listening to this, don't act like I'm saying he's Tyreek Hill, but he's the type of guy that can get over the top on you. And obviously mm -hmm. the speed burner and McCole Hardman. So we're going to see out real quick how they can get yeah. deep here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, people are asking about Alec Pierce. How's he looking? Is he hitting a bit of a wall? Another person's asking, where's, is he running with the ones, the twos? Where's he kind of sitting right now? Well, I mean, he's looking good. You know, he's doing a lot of good things. I, I don't think he really hit a wall. I know, obviously, today wasn't the greatest day for the offense, but pretty much every single day, Alec Pierce has looked good. He's making plays. He's catching a lot of balls thrown his way. He's not really dropping anything. Um I, I always will say that I think if he had a good quarterback at Cincinnati, he's a first round draft pick guarantee. Um, I just think there is some opportunities that Cincinnati missed out on because he was like wide open on some plays and Ritter just didn't see it. But I think with Matt Ryan, I think that completely changes. I think he's going to have a really good year. I think, like I said, going to start out maybe a little slow, just getting used to the game. But I think by the end of the year, 
if Paris Campbell stays healthy, yeah, I don't think we'll have any issues at receiver. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think he's hitting a wall. I think um, obviously different body type, but I think I kind of liken him a little bit to Brandon Stokely. It's a blast from the past for you, you Colts lovers out there. But I mean, yeah, just very consistent. I mean, that's kind of what I see out of Alec. He, his routes are very sharp. He he hits his spots. He's where he needs to be. Um, he makes good plays. He, he does make a great play every once in a while. He's more athletic, obviously, than Stoke, Stokely, and his size is different. But he's just a guy, I think, that you're going to look up and go, wait a second, he had 52 catches this year and like 750 yards? How did that happen? Right. You know, type. Of, he's that type of player. Um he's just not a flash and dash guy. You know, I saw somebody mention Traylon Burks and, and some of the other guys that got drafted out there. I talked about sky Moore. Those guys are for lack of better term, flashy. They're the guys that are mm-hmm. going to get over the top and you're going to see them on the NFL network for the, the highlight plays. I don't think you see that necessarily from Pierce. I think you're more likely to see a game where he's got like nine receptions, you know, 87 yards. than you are to see four receptions, 125 yards. Sure. Right. Sure. And that's kind of what the Colts need because, I mean, Pitt can do that. He can go up and get those. We saw that last year. He can make more of that highlight play. Like, that's kind of his jump ball is kind of his thing, you know. Um, so to have a guy that's a little bit more of a, you know, refined route runner that can do more of the things that you need from a number two wide receiver, I think is going to go a long way. And it's certainly, you know, very helpful for him to work with Reggie and, and all these wide receivers really to work with Reggie. And you do have guys like Paris Campbell and Ashton Doolin who also have the big play. So to have kind of yeah. a different – type of wide receiver and what he does, I think is definitely a good compliment to these guys as well. Um, all right. Um, there's actually two questions here, but they're the same topic. Michigan Wolverines asking about thoughts on Ogletree, the tight ends. And also uh, another question about, are we going back to the 2012 frequent three tight end looks of the Colts used to run? I, I don't think we're going to do three tight end looks. I think you're going to see two tight ends on the field a lot. Um, don't know about three. Um, I mean, to me, I think Ogletree is slowly starting to become that number two option. And heading into training camp and really heading to uh, OTAs, I thought he would be the fourth tight end because I just assumed Jelani and uh, Kylan would be battling for that number two spot. But it, it really feels like Ogletree is doing more. And it feels like he's starting to have a you know pretty decent sized lead. Yeah, I think you're going to see some schematic changes. I think um, so while they may show on the roster as three tight ends, I think what you may see is three tight ends, but really one of them flexes to the backfield. Um, so I think you're going to see maybe Frank use a little bit more of that boom guy, right? We, we don't have Wilkins anymore on the roster, but he was kind of the heavier back. I don't know if, if the price kid out of FIU makes it. If he makes it, that may change some of that. Um, but look, I mean, this is a running football team, you know, Jonathan Taylor wants his 2000 yards. Um, we've got a pretty darn good offensive line. Uh, I I think he can get it. So I'm not saying they're going to be locked into three tight end looks, but I I do think you see a version of that, but there's going to be some more motion involved, right? It's Frank. Yeah. Who who knows? He may motion woods all the way out to the, the single coverage right side and, and go a la Darren Waller like Vegas likes to do. So who knows? Yeah. Well, the question also is, do the Colts keep four tight ends on the active roster? I've always been, I kind of feel like they will based off of, you know, how much talent you have in there compared to the wide receiver where you could maybe keep five. And you also do have Naeem Hines who can play the slot for you. It makes a lot of sense for me to do that. I don't know what your guys' thoughts are on that. I think we will. Um, Initially, like before we got in the training camp, I thought the man that was going to be left out was probably Ogletree, but I, I don't really see them getting rid of Granson. I think Jelani, it's too early. I think you got to keep him and let him develop. And then with Ogletree, I think he's doing enough to where you can use him as a number two or, you know, you can have a number three if you want to put out three guys out there. Um, so I, I think we're going to keep four. And we might only keep five receivers, like you said, because of Hines. I I, I don't know. It, it's going to be tough, but I, I do think we keep four tight ends. 
Yeah, I think a little cheeky here, but we always keep four tight ends. Remember, Luke Rhodes is classified yeah. as a tight end, right? <laughs> <Maybe five. laughs> so shout out, Luke. I think he's a main black bear, as a matter of fact. But uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely think you keep four with Luke. Um, I don't know. I mean, you're a run-heavy team. It, I think it'll come down to if they feel like other people believe that their practice squad may get ripped if they put the fourth one on the on the practice squad Mm -hmm. i think i think you could easily make a case for four of them um in woods granson ogletree and uh obviously mo but i don't know i mean maybe maybe we're getting a little local hype on the ogletree thing and the rest of the league may sleep on him a little bit i would hate to lose him on the practice squad necessarily but but maybe that's something you see too i think it also will depend on injuries Right, we haven't hit somebody else yet. Once we hit somebody else, and injuries may happen, I think right. we may see. And you know, what they could do too, if they don't like, let's say Sam or uh, Jack Cohn a whole lot, you can always have Jelani Woods as QB three. <laughs> now you keep all four. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, uh, I was going to say Pascal used to play quarterback as well, if I, my memory yeah. serves correctly. So, um, but. No, I, I definitely think it'll be interesting because I kind of look at like the receivers outside of really the top four right now that you have. And to me, guys, nobody has stood out. Like each guy seems like each day somebody else is, is having a good day. But then the next day, you know, it's somebody else. So it's just like nobody's, to, in my mind at least, and maybe the Colts feel differently, but nobody's kind of separated themselves uh, into that number five role right now. So I'm kind of like, I don't know, like Ogletree's out here making plays every day and stacking good practices yeah. on each other, whereas nobody else is really like maybe Kiki Kute would be the only guy I'd say, okay, he had a good day today. Like, you know, he's more the vet. Maybe you roll with him as your five. But I feel like there's a little bit more like guys have are, are actually showing up in practice in terms of the tight ends than right now the, the you know, five on wide receivers that the Colts have. Right. I think blocking is huge. Uh, you know, you're running football team. And I think one of the things that we don't get to see at camp, and I think one of the reasons that we hear Ogletree flashing is because he is making great catches, right? He's going, he's climbing the ladder, as they like to say. Um, but we don't know what Frank's calling. Is his footwork good? Does he block? Um, you know, I, it's been about four or five years, but there was a running back, and I'm drawing a blank, that we didn't keep on the roster. And I was like, oh, athletically, he's the guy. How do you not mm-hmm. keep him? And he didn't make the roster and it came out because he couldn't block. Mm, right. so, I mean, those are big things that I think you question here um, about Ogletree. Not that I've heard anything about bad blocking, but the Colts are a pretty traditional team from that standpoint. So mm-hmm. I, I do think he's making unbelievable athletic plays. I just don't know. It may have been Roosevelt Knicks, by the way. Uh, thanks, Cardi. <laughs> Yeah. Um, a question here about Alec Pierce and Stefan Gilmore, because Stefan Gilmore has been glued on Alec Pierce ever since day one. They, you know, they put on the pads like he has just been on him like all the way. Um, and I, what are your thoughts on that? Do you guys think that that is going to be a good thing for Alec Pierce? I think it's going to be a good thing for Stefan Gilmore. Like, what are your thoughts on that? I definitely think it helps uh, Alec because you're putting uh, a former defensive player of the year who, you know, is 100% at this point, you're putting him on Alec, and it's just going to make him better because you don't want to make it easy for somebody like him. You want him to go through some difficult things as far as guys covering him. That way, once we get to the regular season, you know, he'll already face somebody who's as good or better than whoever the opposing team has on Alec. So I I think it's a good thing. And yes, JDW, that's my fish tank back there. There's Maul. He's red, has black stripes. There's Frederick, <laughs> and then I have two snails. I don't know what to call them. Nice. But there are two snails in there. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Adam, on, on Pierce and uh, really Gilmore being on Pierce? Do you think it's a mutually beneficial thing, or do you think it's more one-sided when it comes to Pierce? I think iron sharpens iron, right? I mean, to to take something out of out of your weekly job, right? It's, it's an iron sharpens iron type of scenario, right, Cody? And mm-hmm. I think – The routes that Pierce runs is really good for Gilmore. I think Gilmore's long-term skill has always been his break on the ball. So I think that they really do help each other in that manner. Um, I think at the end of the day, Alec Pierce, the sky's the limit 
Um, I, I think he's just going to be an under the radar guy. I think I've heard Jordy Nelson comparisons out there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously Jordy was an amazing receiver, um, but he had the Aaron Rodgers factor too. So I'm <laughs> not crazy enough it. to think Matt Ryan <laughs> is, is going to do the same with Alec Pierce that yeah. Rodgers did. Yeah. By the way, guys, listen to this man right here. Even though he is spreading Sam Ellinger propaganda, uh, be sure to like the stream, yeah. guys. Subscribe, all that good stuff. Appreciate it. Um, all right. Uh, here we go. Um, oh, here's a, here's a good question that's actually been debated amongst Colts fans. Like, do you think, you know, the, the today especially like with the Colts struggling do you credit that to maybe the Colts lacking weapons or the defense just being that good I think it's a little bit of both um I think the Colts could use maybe one more weapon I don't think it's like anything bad or anything but I also think the defense is really good and this is kind of what you want to see from the defense this is what we were all expecting so to see that the defense so far and it's only training camp but it's looking like they're going to be as good as advertised. I, I think it's more both. But again, we have a lot of young guys there too. So I think they're going to get better throughout the year. And, you know, we, th- having a lack of weapons may not be an issue for us once we get to week 16 or 17. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm going to halt the conversation right here, guys, because the reality is this: we've had one bad day. Yeah, like today. Today was not awesome, right? Mm-hmm. But I mean, I think it was Kevin Bowen. Was it last week? Bowen was talking. I mean, we're talking like six incompletions between mm-hmm. seven on seven and eleven on eleven for Matt Ryan. So, like, let's not. I, I've heard a lot of other people or seen a lot of other people talk about kind of overblowing a situation. Let's stop the train a little bit. We're not looking bad. It's not a weapons issue. In camp, you run more offensive or more pass plays. Mm-hmm. For one simple reason, offensive passing is a timing scenario, especially in the NFL. So that's a big part. Camp, mm-hmm. you don't see a massive amount of run, right? Frank may throw a five-minute session in a two-hour practice of actual run. So I don't think that our offense looks bad. I do believe right. that our defense is better. Um, so I, I think let's halt the, uh, oh, my gosh, conspiracy theory, world's coming to an end. The Colts had a <laughs> terrible day thing. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, last week, last week it, it sounded like it was just more of the same and really good play from our offense. Yeah, right. absolutely. All right, Devin has a good question. Which undrafted free agent will make the roster this year? So if you guys had to pick, I think there's a couple guys that could potentially, you know, contend for this. But you have to pick one guy, undrafted guy, that you think is going to make this final 53-man roster. Who's that guy? JoJo D. JoJo Doman, hands down, not even up for a discussion, in my opinion. I think there's a chance he may take Zaire's job. He's that good in practice. Really? Yes. Wow. Yep. His flow is beyond beyond where I expected it to be. I I think this year there's a potential we actually actually see more than one because just with how the draft was this past season and how many people were actually eligible to be drafted just with the whole COVID stuff. Um there's a lot of really good players that weren't drafted that in any other draft they would have been drafted. So I think JoJo's going to make it. The other hot take, maybe not. I think Jack Cohn. I, think I knew you Sam. were going to do that. I, knew I think it. he's going to beat Sam. I think. I knew it. Look, I know Frank Reich loves Sam. They like Sam because you know he has a great story. You know he's a competitive guy, but Jack Cohn fits the offense more than Sam does. Like he fits what they want in a quarterback he's gonna get rid of the ball quick he's the ball's gonna get to where it needs to go you know he's bigger he can move around a little bit like he's not slow he's not like philip rivers he can he can extend a play not for long but he can extend a play if he needs to and give some more time and i honestly think that if he played under or behind a better offensive line last year he would have been drafted i i think he's a good quarterback i, I think he beats out sam what about the Seltzner kid out of Wisconsin at right guard? We're a little shallow at guard. And yeah. it sounds Jason, crazy, but I yeah. mean. Yeah. And Jason Sprague's been playing a little bit right guard, which is interesting to me. Um, yeah. Indiana product, obviously. And uh, I, I guess like we, I always 
just thought of him as a tackle, but maybe I guess he does have some position flexibility inside. So, yeah, I think one name that I would say if I'm not picking jo- Jojo Doma because he's my number one guy too, I'm probably going C.J. Verdell uh, for RB4. I think Lindsey right now has the third position, but I think the Colts will keep four running backs as well, especially if they keep the five wide receivers. Um, so I think Verdell definitely offers, um, you know, a lot, uh, you know, just from a potential standpoint. It seems like out of all these undrafted guys, he's had the best, you know, couple days of camp so far. Right. Now that could change because there are a couple other guys as well that are kind of going for those spots. Um, but I think if you're making me choose right now, I'll probably say CJ Verdell is kind of my dark horse to make the final 53 man roster on the offensive side. Possibly. I mean, there, there could be more than two. There could be three or four guys. I mean, the, you know, just all the guys that were taken after the draft, it, it, some of these guys might have been drafted. Like JoJo would have been drafted, I think. I think Jack Cohn any other year would have been drafted. Um, I think a lot of guys that went undrafted, like, uh, Price is another guy. I know he's being brought up. He's somebody I'm not as big on Denmark, if I'm going to be honest. Denmark, like, yeah. I, I didn't think he was all that great at Connecticut, and Connecticut is not a good you know, football program to begin with. They don't play great competition, and he allowed a run lot of, heavy. Uh, yeah, they are run heavy. So but he allowed a lot of sacks, too. Yeah. So <laughs> that's why I'm not too big on him. And I, I, I don't see him making the team personally, but. I, I think this is going to be one of those weird years where there's a lot of talented guys. I think um, the Cincinnati guy they got, um, uh, Michael, or no, the oh, young. receiver, Michael Michael Young. Yeah. Michael young. I think he might make it too. Hmm. Um, I mean, it just depends how, you know, receiver five through whatever they have right now looks. Um, it, it, it's one of those years. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm trying to see, um, trying to see any comments. It's kind of just people arguing in the comments. So I'm trying to sift through these. <laughs> uh, yeah. Some of these are repeats as well. So sorry, if I don't yeah. get to your question, we probably already answered it. Um, uh, Trayvon Walker getting a sack did see that, but also didn't he get like a roughing the passer or something like that on the first play of scrimmage. So, you know, know. you know, you are loved. Stop lying to yourself. Jack Cohn is a good quarterback. 3,200 passing yards with a horrible offensive line last year is pretty good. <laughs> Look at the Oklahoma State Fiesta Bowl game. 509 yards passing, five touchdowns, one pick. Pretty good. Pretty good way to go. Yeah. All right. Prediction time, fellas. What's our record this year? Just to throw it out there. Um. See, I don't want to look like just a fanboy. You know, I want to be, you know, like super – Stop it, JDW. Okay. Look, I was with you and then you brought up Chad Kelly. Stop it. Um, stop it. He's yes, he's not mobile, but he can extend the play enough. You are loved. He had a pretty decent 40. Um, and I saw him run too at Notre Dame. Um, I don't want to sound like a fanboy or anything, but looking at the schedule, I, I see 13 and 4. Uh, I would say 11 and 6, 13 and 4. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Um there, there's some tough games there, obviously, with Kansas City and Buffalo. Well, Buffalo's not regular season, but uh, Kansas City and you know, like there's some good teams on their schedule, but they 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 should be a lot of those teams. Yeah, what do you think, Adam? Yeah, I'm I'm scrolling through as you guys can see my eyes probably on my second screen right now. I mean, Kansas City game is obviously going to be a good one. Um, you know, I think we've got to get to a point now mentally where the Patriots game isn't nearly what the Patriots game usually is. But for like the 784th year in a row, we played New England in New England. So we're, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, Pittsburgh's not going to be what they are. At Dallas could be a difficult game um, only because it's a Sunday nighter and Jerry somehow always likes to get his calls. And then the Chargers game on week 16. Yeah, I mean... I don't think it's out of the question to go 13 and four. Um, I think 12 and five is more realistic. They always seem to lose a game. We think they should win. And they always seem to win a game. We thought they may lose. So that that's kind of, I think the, I think 12 and five, 13 and four is probably good. I will tell you that at one point I saw on like DraftKings, that'll tell you how much of a degenerate gambler I am, but uh, (laughs) on DraftKings, uh, I think the over under was like eight wins. Wow. Yeah. 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 So that was a that was an easy click 
click in uh, into that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe I'm more call me a pessimist, but I'm gonna go eleven and six. Um, just because this team's got to prove some things to me. You know, like you know, they had all the opportunities in the world, and they went and lost to the worst team in football in the biggest stage. You know, like so. For me, it's just like go to go prove it. I still think that's a good record, but like, and also they got to prove that they can number one win, and they, they're facing Houston. So if they can't do that, I don't know, man. I don't know about this like regime and winning week one games because that's about as easy as it comes. Um, yeah. And then you got to win in Jacksonville as well, and you got to mm-hmm. at least split with the Titans. And I think if you can do that, you have a good chance to you know run the table and win the South for the first time in a long time. So. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go 11 and six right now, but I could easily be talked into 12 and five, um, pretty, pretty easily, depending how a couple games go. And you look at some of those games, the Colts lost, right? The Baltimore game Colts should have won that game. Let's be honest. It was just, you know, if the defense got one stop or like, it was just a bunch of crappy situations that happened to Indy that if they would have just done one of those things correctly, they would have come away with a win in that game. Um, and then you think about, you know, like the other games, the Colts are up by big digits. The Tampa Bay game, for example, um, mm-hmm. even the Raiders game. You know, if, if Carson Wentz finds C.Y. Hilton down the sideline, is that a completely different, you know, situation there? And, you know, you don't feel like the Colts are going to have those games where they come out and crap the bed like they did in Jacksonville. So, I mean, that's four games right there. That you're like, wow, the Colts could have really like, you know, they could have won a lot more games, honestly. Um, and especially just the poor start they had as well. Um, I don't think that's going to necessarily be the case this year. I don't think they're going to, we're going to look at the culture going to be one in five or anything like that this year. I think they have too much talent and too much accountability in that locker room to let that happen again. Um, so I think that will certainly help them as well. So I can easily see 11, 12 wins. That's kind of where I'm going to go there as well. All right. Um, a lot of people are putting their, their thoughts here. All right, so Dylan's asking about he he thinks this is how you beat the Titans. So you shut down Henry, um, and that's how you do it. What are your guys' thoughts on how do you think if the Colts want to sh- on defense shut down the Titans' offense? What are kind of the key things they have to do uh, in order to come away with a victory? I think you have to force Matt Ryan or Matt Ryan. You have to force Ryan Tannehill to win the game. That's something you have to do. You can't let Derrick Henry go off. I I don't know how good Derrick Henry's going to be. Because, you know, he did have a pretty bad injury. And the one game he played in after that injury didn't do a whole lot. I think what you do is you put Kenny Moore on Derrick Henry. That that should take care of it because he tends to lay him out. Um, <laughs> if uh, we had, uh, you know, Willis still on the team, same thing. Put him on him. He lays him out too. Um, but, yeah, you got to force Matt – or I keep saying Matt Ryan. Ryan Tannehill, you got to force him to win the game. I think yeah. that's what you have to do. I, I think you just realize that Henry's going to get his, right? I think you're right in that perspective, Matt. I mean, I, so so he gets 120 yards if you hold him to one touchdown. Okay. Yeah. You, you think Ryan Tannehill is going to throw three TDs on you? Because I don't. And I think that Tennessee defense is bad enough that they're going to give up three to four touchdowns. So I think it's it's play the right game and win the turnover battle. Coach cliche, but win the turnover battle, play the game that you can play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna step away for one second, boys. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. Good good question. Yeah, I don't know, Matt, how much longer you want to be on the stream. We're we're approaching an hour here, Um, but we got we got. I'm trying to catch up on all these comments here. Coach Loyalist in here. He's asking if you think Eric Johnson and Curtis Brooks will both make the 53 man. He said both have flashed multiple times in camp, which honestly. Outside of the the injury, which fortunately Curtis Brooks is fine, he just got poked in the eye, so all good there. Um, I haven't heard a lot about Curtis Brooks actually. What are your, what are your thoughts on potentially these two guys? You know, and making the final fifty three man. Um, I mean, I agree. I, I I think they both have a chance. I think Johnson's going to make it for sure. Um, it might be a little more difficult for Brooks. Um, but I think Brooks has a shot to make it too. I I like him. Um. He might just be that guy that needs, you know, a little bit of time to develop. And, um, you know, it seems like Chris Ballard wants to have depth on the defensive line because, you know, not last year, but there's been times in the past where that's been an issue. So Mm -hmm. I think both have a good chance to make the team. If it was only going to be one, I'm probably leaning Johnson right now. It sounds like he's having the better training camp as a whole, but I could see both. Yeah, what are your thoughts, Adam? Yeah, I mean, 
for those of you who do listen to the factually football side of things, I'm a big Brooks guy. I, I do think that he's schematically, I think he really fits well. And in fairness, I don't know a massive amount about Johnson. I just know that the competition is quite different that they both played. And when you look at those kind of cuts down to 53, you know, the Colts are in a weird spot this year where they actually, they've finally got to that depth point that we've been asking them to get yeah. right year over year. And, and they're becoming a much deeper team. I think Johnson's got a longer road to hoe and it, and it does sound like he's making some plays, but at the end of the day, I think Brooks can play either tackle or end. And I think that may be what, if there's only one of them, I think that may be what, what keeps Brooks instead. Hmm. Well, also the Colts did lose Taylor Stallworth in free agency to Kansas City. So they do need that backup one tech, which I kind of feel like Eric Johnson could potentially be that. He'd yeah. kind of be that nice backup to Grover Stewart and, you know, come in when he needs to and things like that. Um, I kind of kind of foresee that being his role here with the team. But yeah, I like Curtis Brooks quite a bit. Um, obviously, you know, we all saw what he did at Cincinnati, the way he was able to get after the passer. And that's enticing from a defensive lineman that you got in round six. So um, I'm interested to see kind of what he does. And hopefully he, he starts to flash a little bit more and, you know, coaches take notice. We'll see uh, what happens there. Yeah. Um, all right, let's see. I'm trying to catch up on all these questions here. Mm-hmm. Um, what have you guys heard about Philip Lindsay? Cause I know like different people have talked about him, but I don't feel like the, the local media has mentioned him much. Everything I've seen and heard was Philip Lindsay might have the fastest feet out of all yeah. the players. Like he's really good. You know, he's got good speed. Now he's actually got a really good offensive line to run behind. So, I mean, I've heard some good things and it's kind of what I expected. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think Philip Lindsay is a real bad thing for, for Tyson Williams. <laughs> I mean, I, I think yeah. when they got Tyson Williams, I was like, Oh, that's a nice snag. And then they brought Lindsay in kind of late. Um, I think Deion Jackson's going to have a hard time making the team. I, I think it's, you yeah. know, Heinz, Lindsay, uh taylor obviously right now um they'll probably keep a fourth but i think you know you look at a bigger back like a like a Devonte price there and just kind of the way he runs the ball yeah. maybe um but yeah i mean i i watched practice last tuesday i think it was i was out there and Lindsay's feet are, are quick i don't mm-hmm. think i'd ever seen him in person and, mm-hmm. and his feet were they, they moved. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Zach Kiefer of the athletic, he said right now, full plans is your RB three uh, for sure. So yeah. that's good to know. That's good to know that he's, you know, still got some left in the tank there. And I really think it's, it's a good chance that he does make that RB three. And he, I think he's definitely going to make the final 53 man. If he continues doing what he's doing. But I think the question for me is okay. RB four, there's like four or five guys that are, that are going for that position. Who's going to win it, you know? And so, mm-hmm. And who's going to be in the practice squad? Who's going to be the next man up? You know, because you can only keep a couple of these guys. You can't keep them all, unfortunately. Um, Right. So I'm special teams. Yeah, exactly. That's that's when you figure it out, especially for this team. Yeah. We all know how important special teams is to them. And, and unfortunately we've seen on both sides, guys, uh, the Colts win and lose games based off of special teams. So uh, they are very, very important. And you, you're definitely on the back end of the roster. You've got to play special teams or else you're not going to make it on this, on the team. So, yeah. All right. Um, let's continue to go. Some interesting falls chatter out there. Is there, that's what I noticed. I, I saw know. this one from Matt. I think this is an interesting one. We haven't talked about uh, Marcel Dabo. I think that's how you say his name. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, he was, uh, I don't even know where he was from. I'm honestly blanking on where he was from, but I know like there was a lot of hype around when the Colts did bring him in. Germany. Um, I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I think it was. Um, I'm going to be right back guys, but if you guys just want to talk about Marcel Dabo real fast and kind of what you've heard about him and so far in camp. I mean, I haven't heard anything about Marcel at all. Um, I I, uh, I don't know if he's been, you know, doing his thing. I don't know if he's been balling out. I don't know if he's just not been good. I just I haven't really heard anything. That might be – it's not – no, Matt Ryan's not the biggest joker. <laughs> Come on. Um, and that Super Bowl is not his fault if we're going to oh. use that as an excuse. 
overreaction. I always love that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I haven't heard anything about Marcel though. I've been either, and I I gotta be the free roster spot. I guess is kind of interesting. I need to look into the international program a little deeper. In fairness, Matt Davis. Um, yeah. I, I know that obviously we've had a couple guys. I think we had another guy who played Australian rules football a while back that we were trying to get in at, at DN. Um, I don't know a ton about it. I don't know what the roster kind of, if it's exempt or if he's on the practice squad, he's exempt or he can't get taken. Um, so instead of blow you full of a bunch of smoke, Matt Davis, I, I can't really speak about it because because I haven't heard a word about him, but that's a tough room to break into, man. Yes, there's a lot of good ball players back there. Especially, I saw some Marvell Tell comments out there, and and Marvell's size makes him a Swiss Army knife, if you will, as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, it might take him a little bit to kind of, you know, get used to the NFL in general because, you know, they play in you know some pretty good leagues internationally, but I mean, they're not the NFL. No. So it might take him a little bit, but I think maybe he can be that CB4, CB5 type player. You know, somebody that can he can plug in when you need a, you know, when he needs somebody to plug in, and he'll you know do pretty well. He's super athletic, so that's obviously a benefit. Hmm, I think you're muted, Cody. Oh, I hear what you said. There we now. go. You hear me now? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So question here, who will be the surprise cut at the end of the preseason? That's tough. Um, I mean, would Sam Ellinger qualify as a surprise cut? I mean, it might surprise some people. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me necessarily. Um, I don't think Ben Banigou would be a surprise because it seems like everybody talks about him being cut every year. Um, so I wouldn't go with him. I don't know. I'll, I'll go with Sam for now. And then if I, if I can come up with somebody else, I'll, uh, Oh, okay. This might make some people upset. Um, I think that um, Mike Strom. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Say just because, you know, he's missing a lot of, training camp and i think unfortunately that's going to result in him getting cut i think depending on if you know he doesn't get picked up i think he's going to be definitely be brought back to <laughs> uh, sorry john or janix it sam's gone but uh no mike i think maybe he can be brought back to be on training camp but i think somebody's going to take a take a shot at him just because of what he did last year and the potential that he has I think I've got I've got two names. Both we haven't really talked about. Nick Foles. I actually see being caught. Mm. Keeping Ellinger and Clone. Um, in watching practice. Like I get that Nick Foles is a big Frank Wright guy. I'll even kind of go one step further. If they cut Foles, I, he may come back as a quarterback assistant. In fairness. Mm. Um hmm. Because he has not, to me, been even remotely impressive in the multiple different practices I've been to. His throws are not that great. I know he's a great human being, but at the end of the day, we're here to win football games. And the other one that's kind of been chattered here or there um, as we've been on today is Rodrigo Blankenship. I think he loses it to Verity. Verity kicked Mm -hmm. under Tucker um, last year in Baltimore. He was on the practice squad. You know, Frank's already talked about the leg of Verity. Colts have been one and five last year from field goals over 50, which is an issue for Drigo. And, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, Darius or sorry, Shaquille talks about it a lot and and the mental side of the game. And and from what I understand, that's kind of what Drigo was going through last year. Um, So I hope in all seriousness, I hope he gets help with that. But I can Mm -hmm. see Rodrigo and, and Nick Foles both being cut. Right. Yeah, I, I think with Rodrigo last year, it just he looked good and then he had that injury, I think, when they were warming up for the Baltimore game and that that really just kind of ended things last year and that caused him to miss all those kicks. Um 
but I, I think his leg is getting stronger. Um, I, and he never had that issue in college. That was the weird thing at Georgia. He, he was able to make pretty deep kicks. It's just for whatever reason, you know, he's missing them. I don't know if uh, he needs to kind of, I don't know, get whatever's going on in his head knocked out, which maybe that's not an issue. Cause I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's the leg. I, I, I don't know what it is. Um, but I, I don't think he's going to get cut, but I do think this is his final season. And if he has, you know, games where he's missing deep kicks, I can see him being gone, like, after the game. Verity's been banging 65, 68 yarders in practice. Oh. That's hard to hold off of. And he's consistent. Sure. That's I that's the only reason I say that about Drigo. Right. And I, I thought Blankenship, Last year in training camp, he was making like 70 yard kicks too. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's like, I don't think his leg is the issue. There's just maybe it's a mental thing, you know, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe you got it figured out this year. I think, I think it's be a close battle. I mean, because obviously they're not going to keep two kickers, right? They, you'd be insane to keep two kickers. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see, guys. We'll definitely see. There's going to be a lot of interesting battles going on, like maybe even some like we talked about, like like the kicking battle. Nobody's really talked about the kicking battle, but maybe it is one that, you know, maybe it's not as, you know, far and away Rodrigo Blankenship's job as maybe some people think. We'll see. Um, but it's going to be uh, it's going to be an interesting battle nonetheless. All right, uh, guys, you have anything else you want to talk about before we kind of wrap this stream up? I know we're a little bit over an hour here. I want to respect your guys' time. Uh, anything else you guys took away from camp that maybe we haven't discussed yet? I mean, I think as thanks far for as... the clown comment, Michigan. Gotcha. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I think we pretty much talked about everything that happened in training camp up to this point, at least that I could think of. Yeah. Oh, one thing I wanted to talk about: Matt Pryor actually held his own pretty well against Yannick Ngakwe today. So That's it's good. good to see him starting to hold his own a little bit more because he was kind of getting whipped the first couple of weeks of practice. Yeah. Um, so it's good to see him. I, I, obviously he's learning some things, you know, going against a really good pass rusher. So uh, I'm excited about that. You know, that he's uh, yeah, he's starting to show a little bit more and you know, not just be in the turnstile there. So, yeah, this is one thing I wanted to say. I think but, the biggest thing I I'm concerned about is it's more schematic than player is, is the pressure on the quarterback, right? I mean, we've yep. had like one in the last five where we've been in the top 15 in, in sacks. And I don't know that that'll change. Again, I think that's schematic. Uh, that's not a shot at any of the ballplayers. I think Yannick's going to be great. Look forward to him hopefully coming on MLB. I'm not jinxing it, Cody, but him coming on your show and, and kind of chatting with you guys as well. But um, I, I just – that's a piece that I still don't feel – like we have an elite guy right now. I think Yanni can be, but I also think you need other players to to kind of help him there. And I don't think anybody's kind of established themselves on that other side. Quiddy Pay is largely a better uh, run player right now for us. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, if you're looking for a weakness so far, that may be it. Right. I, I think Yannick can be a uh, elite pass rusher for sure. I mean, just the past, I mean, he's been in the league for six years, right? Or has he been in for like seven? Yeah, cause yeah. The past six years, right. he's got, uh, you know, he's had at least eight sacks. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's only him and Donald in the league have done that right now. And then everybody else that did that are uh, Hall of Famers or soon to be Hall of Famers. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know if uh, DeMarcus Ware is in the Hall of Fame yet, but he'll be in the Hall of Fame if he isn't right now. <laughs> so but this I, is year seven. Yeah. So I, I think he can be. And then I, I think just with the force Buckner there and some of the other guys we have on that defensive line, it's just going to elevate him. And I, I can honestly see 12 to 14 sacks for uh, Yannick. It'll be interesting to see how he plays without Max Crosby on the other side. I think sure. that, that may be something that's, I don't want to say overlooked, but we don't have a Max Crosby on the other side. So um, again, it's not a shot. I'm not saying it wasn't a good pickup. I think it was a great. I think it oh, was yeah, a get ready. Yeah. I see. I think all of that, and just kind of thinking through some of that. And and look, before he had his ten sacks last year, he had three sacks and five sacks the two years before. So hmm. you got to kind of think through some of that. 
and again, not get yourself an overhype. But uh, right. we'll see. And again, schematically, he got 10 in Gus's system last year. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm also excited for Dio Dangbo in the first mm-hmm. full actual off season. And the dude's a freak. I mean, my goodness, he's bigger than he's not bigger. He's taller and longer than DeForest Buckner. So, you know, could he be a surprise guy that comes on and really starts like lighting it up? You know, right. nobody really talks about Dio, but I really think he has a great chance to kind of be a, a sleeper player that could be a really big X factor for this team. I really feel like he could. Uh, The question is kind of where is he going to play? You know, is he going to be more of that traditional D end? Is he going to maybe shift inside on like pass downs and stuff like that? You know, what's his role look like? I don't know if the Colts quite know that yet. Um, Right. Or does he kind of move around? Is he kind of that hybrid player that can do a little bit of both? I don't know yet, you know, but I'm really intrigued to see the ways that they decide to use him this year. And then getting back Tyquan Lewis, like I talked about, which, you know, before the injury guys, he was the best player on the defensive ends of Colts last year. I mean, he mm-hmm. was playing very well up to that game against the Titans. And even in that game with the Titans, he was playing really well before he went down with that injury for the year. So I really yeah. think, guys, um, if Dio plays defensive end, the Colts have four legit guys that I think are solid to above average players. And that's right. really exciting. That's something we haven't said about this defensive end room. And honestly, since Robert Mathis retired, if we're being completely honest, like it's been that mm-hmm. long. So I'm really excited to see how these guys kind of gel together. And, you know, Ken Yannick and, and Quiddy Pay potentially be one of the better, you know, tandems in the NFL this next year. Um, you know, maybe they help each other. And you talked about Matt DeForest Buckner in the middle. Maybe that helps him get more one-on-one opportunities to go make an impact and wreck it, wreck the quarterback's lives, you know, because they're going right. to they're gonna have to do that because they're playing some really good quarterbacks this year. So yeah. I am so intrigued. That's like the unit that I am so, so excited for this year. Yeah. Oh, yeah, me too. And, I, and good I'm catch, excited. John, by the way. I did split his – he had time with two teams, so it was three with one team, five with another. Good catch, but I, I'm a big one to admit when I'm wrong. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, cool. I think that'll do it for this one. I appreciate everybody who hopped in here, who chatted, even if you didn't always agree with our takes. I really appreciate you guys, for the most part, being respectful in the comments. And, uh, yeah, guys, let us know your thoughts kind of on – this day at training camp, any other players or any other storylines that we may have missed. Uh, like I said at the beginning, be sure to hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe. All those good things. Guys, we're coming out with a lot more content. And also be sure to check out uh, the other podcast that Adam and myself and our friend Andrew does or do as well. It's called Factually Football. If you just type in Factually Football Colts on YouTube, you'll find us. And also pretty much anywhere you listen as well to podcasts. Um, and also check out Matt's channel as well. Um just type in inside the horseshoe podcast. You'll find Matt's channel as well. Uh, guys, any last comments before we wrap this thing up? No, um, I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. Yeah. Same, same thing, Cody. And uh, it's going to be an interesting Saturday game, right? Yeah. I, mean, I, I right. think we're going to get a, a big view into maybe some of the quarterback conversation, what, what they believe at the running back situation. You, you're probably not going to see a, a JT, a pit. I, I would even say probably maybe even Paris. Maybe even Alec Pierce you won't see. So you're going to get some depth look, I think, this first week. I think second week is where you get a little more of those starters. So. Yeah, we'll see. The Colts said they, they might play a few starters. So we'll see who those players will be. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to that first game. Some actual uh, competition. That's not your own team. Um, it's going to be great for them. Yeah. And you're, you're right. We're going to get a lot of these questions answered, I think, um, especially more of those backup positions there that we're going to try to figure out kind of who rounds out this roster and some of those position battles as well. But, guys, that'll do it for this one. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, guys, go Colts. <laughs>